Hi everyone, welcome to the Wednesday edition of Source 16 News. I'm Eddie Owen. Thanks for joining us. Topping our news, double murder charges were dropped today without prejudice against a Fort Campbell soldier accused of killing his ex-wife and her former mother-in-law. According to a release order, Brent Burke was supposed to be released from the Hardin County Detention Center, but the Judge Advocate General of Fort Campbell requested Burke to be released into the custody of the judge's office. The order also states any questions about proceedings being considered by federal authorities must be addressed by those authorities. As we previously reported, Burke was accused of killing his estranged wife, Tracy Burke, and her former mother-in-law, Karen Comer, in 2007 at Comer's Rineyville residence. After four mistrials, prosecutors were unable to prove the Fort Campbell military police officer committed those murders. A Christian County judge today continued the case of a Hopkinsville man charged with kidnapping and murder. Circuit Court Judge John Atkins continued the case of 44-year-old Tramel Smith until September 21st for a status conference to allow attorneys on both sides to have enough time to gather evidence. Commonwealth's attorney Lynn Pryor told Judge Atkins she sent a number of items for testing and she believes it's going to be at least six months before she receives lab results. Meanwhile, Smith's attorney, Craig Newburn of Lexington, requested a bond reduction, which was denied by Judge Atkins, who told him to submit a written motion. As previously reported, Smith is accused of committing murder on March 1st by intentionally and wantonly assaulting and suffocating Susan James and dumping her body on the side of Christian Quarry Road off East 9th Street in Hopkinsville. The home of a Trigg County volunteer firefighter was destroyed by fire last night. South Road Fire Chief Bill Schaefer told Source 16 that firefighters were dispatched to a two-story partial log home in Trigg County located at 8507 South Road around 6 o'clock. He said a passerby noticed the fire and stopped to make sure no one was in the home and then called dispatch. When firefighters arrived, Chief Schaefer said the home was completely engulfed in flames and there wasn't much they could do. According to Schaefer, the homeowners, Cecil and Donnie Curtis, had left the home about two hours before the blaze ignited. There were no injuries reported, and at this time, the cause of the fire has not been determined. Chief Schaefer says Linton and Roaring Springs Volunteer Fire Departments assisted South Road firefighters at the scene. Firefighters remained on the scene for about two and a half hours. Fort Campbell officials recognized two senior brigadier generals this evening at the local post for their service and commitment to the Army. Brigadier General Warren Phipps became the 101st Airborne Division's Deputy Commanding General of Support in August 2009. Meanwhile, Brigadier General Steve Townsend became the 101st Airborne Division's Deputy Commanding General of Operations in June 2009. We'll have more details on the Honor Eagle ceremony coming up tonight at 10 o'clock. A Hopkinsville man learned the hard way that lying to police would land him in jail after his toddler allegedly fired a gun into an apartment. 24-year-old Edward Carter of Denzel Drive was charged with one count of falsely reporting an incident, endangering the welfare of a minor and first-degree wanton endangerment. Hopkinsville police say officers were dispatched yesterday to Denzel Drive in reference to an accidental discharge of a firearm. When officers arrived on the scene, Carter told police his hands went off of his gun when he was trying to clear it. However, police say an investigation revealed his three-year-old daughter got a hold of the gun and fired a shot into the wall of an adjoining apartment when he was asleep. Carter was booked into the Christian County Jail and released the same day. In a story first reported last night at 10, a former elected Trigg County attorney has been sentenced to eight years in prison for his role in a multi-million dollar investment scam. According to reports, the retired military attorney, 67-year-old Kenneth Kennedy of Clarksville and formerly of Katie's, was sentenced by a U.S. District Court judge in Nashville recently after he was convicted in October 2010 of three counts of wire fraud and five counts of mail fraud. Millions of dollars in losses were reported by over 50 people who were scammed by Kennedy and allegedly his wife, Sheila Kennedy, and Bob and Ann Scarborough of Hopkinsville. In addition to his sentence, court records indicate the judge ordered Kennedy to pay restitution to his victims and to remain on supervised release for three years following his release 
from prison. The Kennedys and Scarboroughs are scheduled to stand trial on similar charges in Christian Circuit Court this October. And in another story reported last night at 10, the Christian County Board of Education held a special called meeting last night to evaluate Superintendent Brady Link's annual performance. According to Board Chairman Barry Cornelius, Link's performance is above average. He was evaluated on leadership and district culture, policy and governance, communications and community relations, organizational management, curriculum planning development, instructional leadership, human resources management, values and ethics of leadership, student achievement and learning. Following his nearly two hour evaluation, Link talked about his plans to improve the school district. I would like to see, all, we have nine of our schools now that are uh, above the state average. Uh, I would love to see all 15 of our schools above the state average. We've made progress. We had four when I came here above the state average, and now we have nine. But student achievement is, uh, is, is what superintendents should be, uh, you know, evaluated on. And, and I really think that that's our number one goal, is we want to see that every student in Christian County has the ability to do what they want to do when they graduate. The board presented Link's evaluation after going into closed session for preliminary discussions about his performance. Officials at Murray Calloway County Hospital have a new way to receive EKG reports on patients in transit. The hospital is now capable of receiving EKG reports straight from emergency medical service vehicles with the help of digital EKG technology, similar to the one shown here installed in the vehicles. According to a release, the vehicles with the technology can take a picture of a patient's cardiac status before they reach an emergency room. Hospital CEO Jerry Penner says, we're fortunate to have such forward-thinking EMS teams in Western Kentucky, and we value their leadership and collaboration in this initiative. Studies show that treatment within 90 minutes of arrival can help save lives and heart muscle. Want a chance to win a new car? The Trooper Island raffle car is on display today and tomorrow at the Kentucky State Police Post in Mayfield. This year's raffle features a black, shiny 2011 Mustang GT California Special with GT stripes and a charcoal black natural grain interior. Using advanced technology, its 5.0 liter dual overhead cam V8 engine and six speed automatic transmission delivers 412 horsepower and 390 pound-feet of torque. The Trooper Island raffle car will also be displayed during the Freedom Fest downtown street fair in Murray on Friday and Saturday. Tickets to win the car are available for $10 in the front lobby of Post 1, located on U.S. Highway 45 in Graves County, and only 20,000 tickets will be sold. The winning ticket will be drawn August 28th at the Kentucky State Fair in Louisville, and ticket holders do not have to be present to win. KSB officials note that the raffle winner is responsible for all taxes and license fees. Well, a Hopkinsville man was scammed out of thousands of dollars after he participated in what he thought was an international sweepstakes. Steve Scaria of Blaine Drive told Hopkinsville police he received a letter in the mail with a check worth nearly $5,000 and was listed as one of three finalists to receive $500,000. According to Scaria, he was advised to deposit the cash into his bank account and then return the money to two listed addresses. Police say after he deposited the money into his account, bank officials told him the check was fake and that money was taken from his savings account to cover the checks. Now, if you believe you have been scammed, contact the Hopkinsville Police Department at 270-890-1500. The Kentucky Office of Mine Safety and Licensing is investigating a mining fatality in eastern Kentucky. The accident occurred at the Manalpalan P1 mine at Path Fork in Harlan County around 11.50 this morning when a miner was killed in a roof fall. As of news time, the identity of the miner killed had not been released. This is the second mining fatality in Kentucky this year. Back in March, Robert Cook of Inez was killed in Martin County when he was pinned between a continuous miner boom and a mine wall. Well, last week we told you about the Louisville Zoo's newest cuddly exhibit, Knick. 
an orphaned polar bear cub that gained national attention when she was rescued in Alaska. Well, Kinnick has reached her new home thanks to UPS. The cub's journey from Alaska to Louisville was, uh, was dubbed Operation Snowflake, and she arrived at the zoo yesterday via a UPS airplane. The polar cub was born last January in a snow den that her mother dug to protect her from the fury of Arctic Alaska, and she was first spotted on Alaska's North Slope in February. It's unknown why the cub was separated from her mother and sibling, but officials say if Kinnick had not been rescued, she would have died. The five-month-old cuddly cub will be quarantined from the public for a period of time until she adjusts to her new surroundings. Here's Hopkinsville Christian County Crime Stoppers Coordinator Officer Paul Ray. These are our featured fugitives of the week. Locating two wanted fugitives. Police are looking for 21-year-old Billy Lee Oliver, who's wanted for drug court violation. Oliver is a black male who stands 5 feet, 9 inches tall, and weighs 170 pounds. His last known address was the 3500 block of Lafayette Road. Police are also looking for 35-year-old Sean Franklin Pernesti, who's wanted for absconding probation. Pernesti is a white male who stands 6 feet, 5 inches tall, and weighs 240 pounds. His last known address was the 100 block of South McPherson Avenue. If you know where police can locate these wanted fugitives, and we've got cash waiting for you. Pick up your phone now and call our tips line at 887-TIPS. If your information leads to an arrest, Crime Stoppers will pay you a cash reward. And remember, we will never ask your name, and you will not have to appear in court. Well, this week's Fugitive of the Week, I'm Officer Paul Ray for Crime Stoppers.